Oh. Hi guys. Well, we have a gray blustery Monday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. As we wind up the fall of 2021, starting to finally feel like the fall here on the last day. That would be Monday, December 20th, 2021. And so uh, as the planet gets ready for whatever is left of the great holiday spirit of Christmas week, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a slow news week about the collapse of a planet and uh, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. But over here on the mainstream media, scrounged up three stories. I don't know if any one of them are <laughs> worthy of a full rant, but we're going to, uh, after we dig through with a steam shovel through the biggest distraction of the history of humanity. We actually have uncovered three stories with uh, one of them at least with a shred of good news. And uh, guys, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit a little bit nervous about wading into these stories. Uh, I don't want to we don't want <laughs> I, I'm just going to read the, the opening uh, to to this one from BBC News. The world's first octopus farm. Should it go ahead? Yes. News that the world's first commercial octopus farm is closer to becoming reality has been met with dismay by scientists and conservationists. They argue that such intelligent sentient creatures considered able to feel pain and emotions should never be commercially reared for food. So anyway guys I am not going to rile up uh, rile up the vegans but you know it's the, it's the same old debate <coughs> and um, You know, about aquaculture, this is over the, the bigger story of, uh, of aquaculture, meaning fish farming, particularly in the oceans. You know, aquaculture is one of the main uh, tenets of the UN sustainability goals about how we are going to sustainably feed a, an ever-growing population by, you know, raising seafood in the ocean. And they go through all the arguments we've been over a thousand times before. And now we just have octopuses. And the plural of octopus is octopuses, according to the BBC. Not octopi. Um, aquaculture is the fastest growing food producing sector in the world. The global aquaculture market is growing at around 5% per year. Some 580 aquatic species are farmed around the world. As the human population grows, global aquaculture could provide a vital source of food. Yes, uh, the EU, uh, I'm sorry, fish kept in captivity tend to be more aggressive and contract more diseases. The EU recently published guidelines acknowledging that the lack of good husbandry practices and research gaps in aquaculture's impact on animal and public health. Um, somewhere they mentioned that the planet is now <clears throat> harvesting and eating 10 
times the amount of <clears throat> wild octopuses we were eating um, about 50 years ago, 10 times the amount. And so, of course, this is one of the, the things the octopus farmers are talking about, that we're just going to eat every single wild octopus uh, in the ocean, so we might as well start uh, eating domestic uh, octopuses instead. Who knows? Uh, I personally do not eat seafood, okay? So I am never going to eat an octopus myself, but uh, I do eat, uh, I do eat pigs. So there you go. Uh, speaking of uh, what I do or do not do, I, again, here's another dicey one. U.S. closer to civil war than most would like to believe, new book says. And uh, so, you know, I, as you may have noticed, I, I try to avoid the political discussions uh, on this channel. Uh, I kind of like that line from Jackson Brown, I think the name of Jackson Brown's song was I Am a Patriot. And in there, he says, I think the line without looking it up, something like, I'm no, I'm no Democrat and sure as hell no Republican. And that sums up uh, my views uh, as much as anybody. Uh, I am no fan of Donald Trump or Joe Biden. I'm not going to get into it. But uh, this, you know, trying to distance yourself and, and see all sides of this. Uh, let's just, this is from The Guardian. Uh, let me just read, get down um, into it. Uh, this is this woman who just came out with this new book, uh, Barbara Walter, not Barbara Walters, Barbara Walter, uh, new book coming out in January. Uh, the U.S. is, quote, closer to civil war than any of us would like to believe, close quote, a member of a key CIA advisory panel has said. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's a direct quote from Barbara F. Walter or not. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, let's get down to the bigger story. Uh, the book in which Walter looks at risk factors, you know, about starting a new civil war, titled How Civil Wars Start, will be published in January. Quoting from the book, quote, No one wants to believe that their beloved democracy is in decline or headed toward war. But if you were an analyst in a foreign country looking at events in America, the same way you would look at events in Ukraine or Ivory Coast or Venezuela, you would go down a checklist assessing each of the conditions that make civil war likely, and you would find that the United States, a democracy founded more than two centuries ago, has entered very dangerous territory. Uh, close quote. Walter concludes that the U.S. has passed through stages of pre-insurgency and incipient conflict and now may be in, quote, open conflict. Uh, she says the, U ha the U.S. has become an anocracy somewhere between a democracy and an autocratic state. Um, 
And then we hear from uh, former Clinton advisor Sidney Blumenthal. Uh, the current situation, Blumenthal uh, uh, talking. Uh, Blumenthal said he does not expect the U.S. to pitch into outright civil war section against section in, in involving the fielding of armies because obviously uh, that would be shut down. Quote, but given the proliferation of guns, there could be any number of seemingly random acts of violence that come from these organized militias which are really vigilantes with partisan agendas, and we have not entered that phase. The real nightmare would be that kind of low-intensity conflict. Um, in November, the International Idea Think Tank, based in Sweden, added the U.S. to a list of, quote, backsliding democracies thanks to a, quote, visible deterioration. It dated to 2019. Uh, polling has revealed similar worries and warnings. In November, the Public Religion Institute Public Religion Research Institute asked voters if they agreed with the statement, quote, because things have gotten so far off track, true American patriots may have to resort to violence in order to save our country. The poll found that 18% of respondents agreed with that. Among Republicans, the figure was 30%. Um, one more quote from uh, analyst Walt Barbara Walter, quote, I wish I had better news for the world, but I could not stay silent knowing what I know. And uh, But we do have some good news for the world, possibly. I don't want... Uh, you know, being Christmas and all, uh, I don't want to leave you just with all bad news if you're an octopus or an American. Uh, we do have some good news, a, a ray of hopium uh, here on the planet. Fossil fuel pollution could be behind the fall in global fertility rates. And uh, so, the, you know, they start out looking at all the usual suspects, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but Professor Niels Eric Schackeback from the University of Copenhagen in Denmark said, <coughs> you know, all of the, the usual suspects was not the whole picture. Quote, we have to face it. Environmental factors are having a decisive and negative impact on our reproductive capacity and the cultural explanations cannot stand alone. Semen quality in healthy Danish men is today much poorer than 50 years ago. Uh, you know, talking about the decline in sperm uh, quantity and quality. I am on the fence about this. Uh, of course, I want to see a decline of sperm uh, quantity go to zero. We're, we're, we're about 40% of the way there. Uh, obviously, we need a, uh, a sperm quantity uh, hell with the quality of zero to save the planet, but at least we're making inroads and we can thank fossil fuels. Yes, and global industrial civilization. The study 
suggests that the decreasing birth rates began at the same time as industrialization and the start of large-scale burning of fossil fuels. The author's hypothesis is that fossil fuels are having a, quote, major negative impact on human reproductivity, said Shackaback, quote, 10 percent of the entire global consumption of fossil fuels is currently used as ingredients in chemicals contained in more or less everything around us. Toys, clothes, cosmetics, food, packaging, building material, and so on. Many of the substances are in endocrine or endocrine disruptors and we are massively exposed to these substances which can be traced in blood, urine, semen, and amniotic fluid from the entire population. There you go. Um, there is no doubt that we are facing a serious societal problem. Yes, it is extremely important that we examine more closely the relationship between infertility and environmental factors, close quote. Yes, while there have been long-held concerns about our planet's ability to support a rapidly growing and increasingly demanding species, there are also now fears of what a collapsing population could entail. And then, of course, they uh, wind up, you know, talking about Elon Musk uh, talking about how global industrial civilization is going to collapse unless we put on more people. I just love this quote. So many people, this is Elon Musk, I've already mentioned this, but it bears repeating, so many people, including smart people, think there are too many people in the world and think that the population is growing out of control. Yes, do you think so, Elon? <laughs> but anyway, three cheers for fossil fuels uh, taking down uh, the, the sperm count. But anyway, guys, of course, the bad news in all of this is what's bad for human reproduction, meaning good for the planet, is, is also bad for every other uh, species we share this planet with, which is bad news for the planet. But as far as if burning fossil fuels, uh, keeping one person from being born, uh, three cheers for fossil fuels. But anyway, I have to wrap this up uh, and go eat a uh, sentient pig cooked over fossil fuels. Although my uh, sperm count is at zero, zero, zero. It has been since I was 22 years old. Get out there and... Uh, Lower your reproductive capacity while you still can. Bye, guys.